Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, today we are back with another opening and the opening for today is another uh, 10 booster bundle and it is Ecoria, Lair of Behemoth. So I actually have kind of fallen out of the loop and buying these products is a good way of me kind of getting back into it and kind of helps me with there. And apparently this is all about, you know, all of the kaiju and the big monsters like Godzilla, Mothra, all of the huge big mans and I'm, I'm a little more prepared today. I also do have the four, I don't know if it's going to be kind of a staple thing, but I do have the f four extra mystery boosters over here at the side. And I have all the prices on TCG Player. Uh, the median prices is what I'm going to be using uh, to kind of grade these cards. So I don't have to wait until the next episode. But the, the ones from last episode, uh, here are the more value cards that are above $2. So we got Conspicuous Snoop, who is a $3 card. This uh, alternate art, the extended art, Scavenging Ooze, is $3 as well. The Lurus of the Dream Den was uh, a $4 card. And this Terror of the Peaks, the back of, I don't know, the back of the box, when you uh, buy most Core 2021 booster packs, this is what you see. And this art here, uh, it's, it's the regular art, regular, no foil. And the regular card, the regular mythic, is worth thirteen dollars. So that's that's an awesome card. We did get some pretty good stuff out of there. And not only that, there are a few other cards that are worth a bit, like the full art lands I pulled are worth about a dollar a piece. So that's awesome. And uh, these are some really cool cards. So we're gonna crack open this Ikoria Lair of Behemoth. So yeah, I'm definitely more prepared here. I even left the seal on this time. It's a little more beat up than before, which is kind of funny because the package I got it in actually it wasn't when I got the first one, the Core 2021 one. It was just this with like a stamp on it showing the, the address and everything. But this one, which is the reason why I took it off for one, uh, the, the seal. But now it's got, it had the whole like Amazon package and everything. And it looked, it looked, it was in a better packaging, but actually came out worse. Which I'm not too worried about. Like the, the, the art I'm going to keep, but it's not like I care about it being in mint condition. What I want to be in mint condition are the cards inside. So let's, let's open this here, see if I can use this pen to open it maybe i don't want to damage anything i don't know oh ooh, i don't know i don't know what i'm doing here let me try to give it some leeway to open here Ugh. i do uh, enjoy this and uh i look forward to using or at least getting some of these awesome giant kaiju hopefully something like the space godzilla i i really like just the the fact of that because the name godzilla also already is like kind of crazy because i mean it's got god in the name which I mean, I don't know, the, the word God has so much connotation with it that hearing that is kind of like, I don't know, it's like a very powerful word. And so, you know, Godzilla meaning like a giant, you know, dinosaur is pretty crazy. But space Godzilla, you had space in there and you, you don't know where it's going. It's just a huge amalgamation of pretty cool words. Okay, so I don't actually know which dude here is on the front. I'm not really familiar with my kaiju. I I, I mean, I, I, know, I know some of the basics, but this guy, I don't actually know who this guy is. I know Ghidorah is the big boy, and he's actually the most expensive guy the, the whole thing. But I don't know about this. I, I don't know who that guy is, but I think he's pretty sweet. Oh, dang. So we actually got the art from the cover here as the art on the front. That's really awesome. Look at this. Look at this bad boy. Yeah, that's, I really wish I would have known that, what that was. I, I want to know the story behind this a, a little bit more as well. Like... When, when did they come up with the idea to, like, have kaiju as part of this? Uh, I, I think that's kind of funny. So you do get the same little uh, holder box for, like, uh, tokens and dice and all that. That's pretty cool. Let's open this up. This seems to be a little bit different. Oh, we got the uh, mutating creatures. So this is, you can mutate. So basically, you can add creatures on top of each other and they kind of fuse almost. So they get their uh, old, so you get the... Uh, their, their abilities and that kind of stuff they add on to a creature and yeah that's i know it's kind of a cool concept there um that's really cool so i guess this is the new um planeswalker that they came out with this that vivian she's like the the tamer of the kaiju the kaiju tamer it's actually a pretty cool t title the taiju i can't even can't even say it it's so cool okay so this is the full art uh, of the box here, which looks pretty freaking sweet, I gotta admit. Uh, the Core 2021, as with all cores, seem to be kind of tame, so this being my second box really ups the ante there. Oh, it looks so freaking cool. Look at that dude! I wanna pull that dude just because he's here. To go along with the box, I think we can be afforded that luxury at least. Okay. 
put that bad boy to the side and we can finally start cracking into the box itself. Whoop! I actually don't know what card, the, the promo card that comes in here. So I'm, uh, that's one of the things I get to figure out. Ooh, ooh, I really, oh my god. This is an awesome, look at this. This spin down is awesome. I really, really like the colors on this. Especially, I don't know, they mesh really well together. Because it's almost like complementary. This is more, I would say, a teal and more of on the blue side than the green side. But just the very, like, I don't know, the very, like gem like precious gem sort of feel to the overall dye and having the painted colors of the numbers be that light teal oh i just think that's an awesome combination i really like that definitely fits the ikoria uh colors but that that's a really cool dye okay so and, and as always i do kind of like the uh the kind of slanted a box design. I think they also do that with Pokemon. I don't know where it started, but I think that's just a cool modern sort of thing that they do there. It also helps to have these more hard cases compared to what I use with the, the old cardboard fat pack sort of uh, things they give you with uh, in the beginning. So here we got our... Oh, here. Here is Colossification. This is our promo card. So it's an enchantment aura, and it's a rare hollow foil. So you enchant creature. When classification enters the battlefield, intent, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 20, plus 20. That's insane. I don't know if this card is worth anything. I, I will uh, kind of give an update on that in the next episode. If it is worth something, if it's not, then, you know, who cares? It's just a cool card. But open this up here. I don't know if these are the same. Definitely different card art, at least. Um, but I, I always like looking at these. And it always ups your collection, because at a certain point, you're going to get a whole slew of alternate art hollow foils so these don't have alternate art i don't believe or maybe they're in the other one but yeah look at that even that look at all these awesome arts my gosh that's awesome wait are these alternate arts oh yeah for the they're not um uh, like showcase they're just alternate art so i guess that's just core 2021 which is okay it's, it still looks pretty cool wow oh the, oh it's like an extra one so you get actually four that's really cool that's really awesome Always love that. No bother. There's no reason to open up the regular art. That's just crappier version of the cool stuff. So we're going to look at these. Ooh. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. So you get a plus one, plus one. Flying, trample, death touch, another flying, and vigilance. And then you have menace, first strike, hexproof, lifelink, reach. So that's actually really cool. So if you ever have to put any of these counters on, it's like, oh, give it a flying counter, which is one of the most common ones. You can actually do that. Uh, the only thing I will say that I don't like about these is they're very, very off cut. Uh, if you, I don't know if you can see that on camera a little bit, but you can see like how, yeah, with that light, you can see how off cut it is. Like there, it's like a whole, like it's two, three centimeters off the normal. So, I mean, these are okay for what it is. It's just kind of a bonus thing thrown in here, but you know, it, it's good to have these, even if they don't look the most amazing, they still work for what they are, so, that's all fine and dandy, and then you got some, uh, is this mutation, oh, this is blocking attacking, just some basic stuff, and here is what everyone was waiting for, the packs, oh my god, dude, I've opened up so many Pokemon, and they have five less in them, compared to these packs, and they're a dollar more, so you're basically getting a lot more bang for your buck here, but god, just these are so so amazing and i love the vibrant colors like i did open a quarry in the last one uh i'll put a link to that it should appear as a card up in the top probably early on in the video but just the, the card arts are awesome and now we can really see all of them so they each i guess each set here instead of different from pokemon uh, they, there's only three card art but it still looks awesome that, that there that works a little bit better but look at these packs Oh, so good, so good. They're just a lot thicker, feel more substantial. It feels like you're getting a lot more in every pack. Yeah, there, there's the money shot. Look at that. Awesomeness. Okay. So, we're going to crack into the pack. I'm just going to organize them because that's how I feel. So, we got the different card arts we're going to open up. We'll open up the Planeswalker first because why not? Here we go, Vivian. I don't know if these are the exact same. I believe they have a different one. I don't remember the exact rules for these compared to the uh, Core 2021 uh, it seems that it's this direction, so we open it this way, yes. So, from the back, we that's the token and stuff. Okay, good, good stuff. So, Hampering Snare, Memory Leak, 
perfectly marmoset so that's one of the pack arts i wonder why they chose this dude you know, there's so many freaking awesome beasts in this and they just got a little little prickly marmoset you just got got clothes on him i mean i guess he kind of embodies the mute, mutated sort of thing i mean doesn't have mutation on him but still that kind of thing like the whatever the para para parakeet thing that's also a porcupine par porcupine uh par parapine i don't actually remember what that was called gloom palette oh i love that art that looks awesome just like the, i like i said in the last one just the the fact that they can make it seem like the light's actually reflecting and have that sort of see-throughness i forgot what it was called it's like a, a subsurface scattering that's what it is where it's like you can see it even through like the very fibers of like this fur or whatever you can see that it's awesome that's really really cool also he's like a little little, little anteater dude that's really awesome a frenzied rapper he's really happy to be here it Dan, it's healer. Wow, look at this man. I'm ready for battle. Essence scattered. This one's pretty good. So counter target creature spell. Uh, not too bad. Sudden spinnerets. Target creature gets plus one, plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it. Untap. That's, that's actually a reason to use that counter. Divine arrow. Divine arrow deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. That's not too bad. Uh, wingspan mentor. <laughs> Teaching them birds how to fly. Skull prophet. Whoa, that's cool. So you tap him to add either a black or a green, and or you can tap and put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. So if you're looking to mill, I can definitely see how this card might be good. And that's also our second uh, uncommon here. This is the last uncommon. Let's see how many we get. Um, we do indeed, I believe, have a foil. Uh, we will see what that foil may be, if it works the same way as card 2021. Unbreakable Bond. Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a lifelink counter on it. Not too bad, especially if you're combining it with this card. So you mill them, and if you mill a creature, you can just cost, uh, cast it for five, whether that be more or less. Uh, that's actually not too bad of a card. And, ooh, the Ozolith. Oh, yeah, the, no, wait, there's, there's a land as well. So I was, that was a little off, but, yeah, the Ozolith. I actually let me let me look up that price here. So I love this art though. That's that's really 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 cool art. Let's see here the Ozolith. The Ozolith. See if that's a a rare one. One of the the biggins, as some would say. Let's look down here for the O's O's O's. I might cut up some of this. Oh, they do have Revitalize, which is really nice. So O. Oh, they have, wait, am I in the wrong one? I think I'm, this is the Core 2021. I think this is Core 2021. Yeah, I got the wrong one open. Um, let's see here. Got to go to the O's. And, oh, they've got some Z's in here. That's kind of surprising. Okay. O's. O's. Oh, the, it's a T. Oops. I, sometimes they don't qualify. Like, a lot of books don't. They, like don't go by the the because it's such an uh, often equated thing so it's like even like in my mind i just thought of the of ozolith not the ozolith so oh dang this is worth like about six bucks that's awesome so 544 is the uh, price on tcg player that's awesome that's really awesome so let me read this out here so there you go it's five bucks right there awesomeness uh, whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield if it has an, any if it had counters on it put those counters on the ozolith at the beginning of combat on your turn the Oz, if the ozolith has counters on it you may move all counters from o the ozolith onto target creature that's awesome so basically all counters get to shift around that i see why that's really good a legendary artifact for one that's that's really awesome so if someone's playing a lot of you know unsummons and whatever and you have very much buffing uh buffing your creatures kind of deck like johnny's primate i keep using that example but all those counters actually go somewhere and all counters so if it's like a flying or whatever you can give something flying that's that's really awesome to preserve your uh, stuff and Blossoming Sands. So this is one of the better lands because it enters in tapped, of course, but you gain one life when it does. It is a green or a white mana. And we have ourselves a bit of a human soldier token. Oh, I should probably separate these out a little bit for the awesome cards, the cool cards, and the neat cards. 
So no hollow foil yet. But that was the first pack. We got a five dollar card. You know that that pack overpaid for itself. So I'm I'm happy with that. Also, these can get insanely expensive. I they had the same exact box over at my uh, Walmart, and it was like 15, 16 bucks extra. So ordering online, I do want to support my local game stores, but it's just so hard to during the pandemic. So I, I do suggest that you do. But if you don't, if you aren't able to, it's no hard feelings. You know, you you, you do what you can to support who you can when you can everyone's situation is a little different okay so you got some forbidden friendship that is his friend it is forbidden uh garrison cat anticipate uh a night squad commando cathartic reunion this is the one on the chandra spellbook that for some reason came from a copper and went into a rare which doesn't make much sense the almighty brush well, i guess this is a pretty meme card at the moment because, you know, it's just a little tiny creature that thinks he's super sweet. Moscow Goraik. I hope I said that right. Bata Batagia Tiger. I think this was the thing that the other lady was trying to train in that High Flyers or whatever card. That's kind of cool. So for five, it's a 3-4 with flying. Uh, when Petagaya Tiger enters the battlefield, target human you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Pretty sweet. Whoa! Look at that alternate art. Whoa, so this is a, uh, I don't know what you'd call this, is this, I think this is alternate art. Um, that's awesome, or, oop, bumped the camera. Okay, wow, that's really, that's really awesome art. Freaking Steve Ellis, you, you did a good job, my man. Re really good stuff here. So for four uh, colorless and one red, he's a 5-4 with mutate reach. Whenever this creature mutates, you may di discard a card. If you do draw cards, you basically... You basically get to cycle one. So that's that's actually really freaking cool. Okay, so I guess I'll put that in a extra pile. I know these are kind of off the screen, but just I want I don't want to detract from the awesomeness. Whoa! Well, you didn't see nothing? I, I dropped all the cards at once. Uh, but I will go over some of the cooler stuff we got at the end. So another sudden spinnerets. A pouncing shore shark. What the frick? Why is it like? Why is it that? Oh, so explain it. So mutate, if you did not know... If you cast a spell for its mutate cost, put it over or under target non-human creature you own. They mutate into the creature on the top plus all abilities under it. So basically you can add cards together and fuse them all together. Oh my god. Look at that. That's so freaking cool, dude. It looks like freaking like some sort of Cthulhu like Lovecraftian monster. Holy frick. So this is a uh, double colored. Yeah, for two colorless, two black, and one gr or one black and one green. It's a 4-4, four, four, so it kind of pays for itself there. So mutate, uh, it's two uh, colorless and either two black, two white, or bl two black, two green, or any combination of the two. One of this creature mutates, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Now that's, that's an awesome card. I really enjoy that art. That's such freaking awesome art. Okay, so I believe that is our second uncommon. Momentum Rumbler. So three colorless and one red for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever Momentum Rumbler attacks, if it doesn't have first strike, put a first strike count on it. Whenever Momentum Rumbler attacks, if it has first strike, it gains double strike to end the turn. That's freaking sweet. I really enjoy that. Okay, so here I believe we do not have a hollow foil, but that is that is okay with me. We still might get something pretty sweet. General Kudru of Dranith. Oh, he's a mythic! Look at that! Second path pack mythic! So for one, a white, and a black, he's a 3-3. Three, three. Other humans you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever General Kudro of Dranith or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from opponent's graveyard. For two, sacrifice two humans. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. So that's, that's really freaking sweet. Oh, God, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. Uh, we'll see how great he really is, though, Mr. General Kudro. So that's, that'd be a G for sure here. Let's see. Godzilla. Nope. Nope. Genesis. Generals. Enforcer. General Kudro. Oh, dang. This dude. Oh, wait. No, the, the regular man uh, is about three bucks. So not too bad. Pretty, pretty cool little man. That's our first mythic of the video. And I think that's, I don't know. That's pretty sweet to have a mythic. In any uh, sort of situation. And Scarab Baron's one of my favorites because I love running white, black, just like the general is pretty, pretty cool stuff here. So this is one of those ones that when it enters the battlefield tapped, you gain one life. And we have ourselves a cool little human soldier. 
I think it's actually the other theme soda. So we got two different arts here of the same type of thing. Just depending on your tastes or whatever. I think I enjoy this one a little bit more just because he's got some magic or something there. Awesome. So only two packs in and we have pulled like, I don't know, like seven, eight dollars worth of cards. So that's, those are pretty much bang for themselves right there. Okay. Up next, we have another pack that is up next. Isn't that crazy? You bet you never guessed that would happen because it did. Dark Bargain for four. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Dark Bargain deals two damage to you. That's not too bad. Um, I mean, it's a common, so it can't be too amazing, but still, that's pretty good. I mean, Lightning Bolt, I believe, was a common, so... It, I mean, they can be good, but that's yeah, that doesn't seem too bad. Oh, and by the way, I'm just reading random cards that I think are cool. There's not, like, a reason for me doing any of it. I'm just like, oh, pretty sweet. Okay, Blister Spit Gremlin. So for one, he's a 1-1, one, one, and for one and tap him, Blister Spit Gremlin deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, untap him. So this is a very, very aggro. That is definitely something that you put in an aggro deck. Greater Sandworm. Whoa, 7 for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Gre Greater Sandworm can't be blocked by creatures with two powers or less. And a cycling too. Wow, big old, big old man, big old. The Saving Otter. He is also one of those Mimi type of cards, so some satchel and all their jewels and such. So for three, he's a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever the Saving Otter deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. Mutual Destruction. Wow, that is a hefty name if I've ever seen one. This spell has flash as long as you control a permanent with flash. As an additional cost to this spell, sacrifice a creature. Destroy a target creature. So it's like, a, what is that, Bone Splinters? Except it has flash. So maybe a little bit better. I would say just because of that extra line of uh, ability. So spontaneous fight for three. Target creature put, gets a plus two, plus two counter until end of turn. Put a flying counter. So that's pretty pretty sweet. For buffing your mans because white does. Uh, rumbling rock slide. Fully grown. Checkpoint officer. Survive crystal. Whoa, that's pretty sweet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I saw a hollow foil somewhere. Um, so that is, this is our second exuberant wolf bear. Grim Dancer, whoa, so a three for three, three. Grim Dancer enters the battlefield with your choice of two different counters on it from among Menace, Death Touch, and Lifelink. That's a really flexible card. That should be another one of the things it can have. That's awesome. So we do have a hollow foil here. Mythos of Brokos. So for two colorless and two green, if uh, a blue and a black was spent to cast this spell, which is the only other two you could use, search your library for a card, put that card in your graveyard, and then shuffle your library. Return up to two, per two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So, I mean, it, this is, it's kind of a, a hard cost to get, but it is uh, definitely a card that I feel like maybe could be used, especially if you're doing something that has double, or you get to choose what type of mana you get from it. It could be pretty okay. So Mythos, Mythos of Brokos. Definitely a cool sounding card uh, at the least. So this Mr. Man, eh, 27 cents. So I didn't guess it would be, it's pretty, so when cards like this become very specific in their text, they, they become less and less worthwhile for the most part. So no, no, not the best dude, but that's okay. A bristling boar. So he's a 4 for 4, 3 bristling boar, can't be blocked by more than one creature. So it's like anti-menace, I guess. And we got ourselves a normal little swamp. And why is this backwards? Oh, frick, are you kidding me? They can't even give you a token. I, I hate how you aren't like, you can't get a token sometimes. Like, it's not like a requirement. I mean, tokens or whatever, you can use anything as a token. This could be a token. But frick you, I like having the art. It's fun. Okay, so next pack, that was pack number three. And I mean, we we I was going to say it's a little lackluster, but we also did a whole bunch right there. We, we got a whole bunch of great stuff right there at the beginning. So I'm, I'm okay, but we still have a lot of packs left to go. Ten, excluding this one, I believe. Okay, so another hampering snare. More memory leak. That prickly mama set. Startling development. That awesome gloom pangolin. Oh, oh, my, my pile is getting a little too big. I'm going to switch them out to with a new pile so it doesn't get overcrowded. Because we're opening a lot of cards here, folks. A frenzied raptor. 
a day squad marshal. Thwart the enemy for three. Prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponent controls. That's pretty sweet. Imposing Rantosaur. Very imposing. Look at his stance. He's ready to go. Blood curdle for four. Start destroy target creature. Put a menace counter on a creature you control. Hmm, not too bad. Not too bad. These cards are also very slighty. A uh, Katra Crystal. So I believe we uh, pulled that earlier. So that's our first in common. Second, IV Elemental, X in green. Uh, it is a 0-0, zero, zero, but IV Elemental enters the battlefield with X, plus one, plus one counters on it. So you basically get to power this thing up as you wish. Call of the Death Dweller, which I believe was that Lourdes was the Death Dweller. I believe. I saw the card sitting out here. Uh, the, no, the Dream Den. Very, very similar. That's what, I, that's what I was looking at, was the eyes. I was like, oh, it's like the same card. They probably have some kind of similar meaning. Uh, at least they look like a similar species or whatever. Uh, the, the dudes in here that are dying of poison? I don't know. Uh, return up to two higher creature cards with total converted mana cost of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them. Then put a menace counter on either of them. So basically, you basically get to return dudes and they are buffed. So let's see. Uh, ooh. Got another one of these. And this one is actually like cut right. It, it's not all off. I guess that was just a misprint. On the other part, so I definitely would use this one over any of the other ones. Uh, we do, mm, yes, we do have a, a no, 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 we don't have a foil. Okay, that's okay. Ooh, oh, there, look at that. That's a path or a planeswalker. That's my first ever planeswalker. Uh, oh, and he's a mythic. I mean, all of them there are. Wow, wow. I, I actually, I'm not for sure about that, but this is our second mythic, Luca Copper Coat Outcast. Okay, I'm gonna read this after I check for his price. That's awesome. That looks really cool. He's got a giant. Tiger Man, so that is my first ever Planeswalker. So we're looking for the L's, the L's, 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 Luca. A $3 card here. Wow, that's awesome. So he starts with five devotion, he is five to cast. And you for plus one devotion, exile the top three cards of your library. Creature cards exiled this way. Again, you may cast this card from exile as long as you control this Planeswalker. Minus two, exile target creature you control. Then reveal card from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. Put that card onto your battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. So with that, you basically can start ramping up creatures because you can keep doing that. And let's say you have one that's like an, a 5-5 five, five or whatever. Or no, he costs 5 or 6 or whatever. Like a really big one. You have to go through your whole library until you find one with, with higher. So if you at least have a higher one in there, you basically get to exile for a better card. So I can see why this is better. Uh, each creature for minus seven, so you basically have to up it twice. Each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. So that's that's pretty cool. Okay, and R4. So that's that's freaking awesome. First ever Planeswalker. He may not be the best one to pull uh, out of everything, but he's he's pretty freaking cool to me, okay? Pretty sweet. Um, I mean, both the ones I pulled, both the mythics, mythics could be used as commanders. Um, I think at least most mythics could be used as commanders as long as they're creatures. But yeah, so we were only like, what is this? This is like the fifth pack, so four packs in, we were able to pull two mythics already. That's freaking crazy, dude. This is like such good value. Um, and I will give like my kind of consensus on this box at the end, just because I think it's pretty sweet. So Spellcaster Wolverine. Adaptive Shimmer, Pfeiffer, zero, zero, Flash. Adaptive Shimmer enters battlefield with three plus one plus one counter counterstar. That's really stinky. Uh, Phase Dolphin. Brush Meat Poser. Oh, wait, is this... Uh, bro so the, the Almighty Brushwag. Is he the one? He, does he... This, does this dude kill it? Or this girl? This 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 thing? This monster freaking cleaves their skulls with that freaking scythe, if you can see that. That's a scythe there. Man, are you killing brushwags? I, I don't I don't know if I agree with that card. Heightened reflexes for one target creature puts a plus one plus zero until end of turn. Put a first strike counter on it. So kind of kind of okay. A lot for that. Uh, at least for it's not much for its cost, so it makes sense. Coordinated charge boot nip. I actually really like this guy. He was a reprint from an older set. Um, so for two, he's a two-one boot nipper. Enters the battlefield with your choice of death of a touch of a death touch counter or a death counter on it. Uh, Wilt. This one's pretty cool. One of the better ones. Uh, Divine arrow. Divine arrow deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Not too bad. Essence scatter. Another really good one. Kind of I think the uh, the blue equivalent of Wilt in a way. Uh, escape protocol. I believe this is our second uh, uncommon here. 
channeled force. Whoa. Actually, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like blue, like like the dye here, it's, it's, I think the combination of blue and red just looks awesome in most cases, especially when it's different shades than the normal, you know, monotone blue and red. So for two colorless, a blue and a red, uh, it's an instant with the effect of, as an additional cost to cast a spell, discard X cards. Target player draws X cards. Channel Force deals X damage to up to one target creature or Planeswalker. So basically, you can just cycle all the cards in your hand, or as many cards as you want from your hand, and deal that much damage to this, I feel like, to like a creature or Planeswalker. So I feel like this is a pretty, pretty cool card. A Channel Force, I feel like I've heard of that before. And Clash of Titans. Target creature fights another target creature. So it's for five. Okay, so we have here uh, no foil. So Clash of Titans and Zerda the Dawn Waker. I think we actually pulled this one before. It might be worth a dollar or so. So not too good, not too good, but okay. And Companion, I kind of fear what that uh, is. You can have a Companion with your deck. So this is, I think, maybe a Kaiju or at least a lower level type of thing. So we got Bloodfell Caves. This is the uh, black red equivalent of the Gain Life. And another freaking stupid freaking card that no one would ever use, and it's just a waste of cardboard. Sweet, that is what we're looking for. Okay, okay, so we got ourselves five packs here before we move on to the four mystery packs, so nine left in total. Let's crack into it, boys! Crack into it! Okay. Boom! We got ourselves a serrated, oh, serrated scorpion. So good, so good. So for one black, he's a one, two, and when it dies, it deals two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life. Really freaking good, really freaking good. Um, definitely good for aggro. If you're playing aggro, that is what it is used for. Sleeping darts, two, when a sleeping dart enters, when a sleeper dart, not a sleeping dart, enters the battlefield, draw a card. Sacrifice it, uh, tap it and sacrifice it. Discard creature does not... Uh, d target creature does not untap during its colors next untap step. So, I guess it's like putting it to sleep. Gust of Wind. Corpse Turn, one of my favorite cards. For uh, You basically get to look at the top three, and you may put creature cards from there back into your hand. So, kind of kind of, sort of a creature draw. Uh, one of these weird, like, mutate... Oh, I think this is the... Yeah, Cloud Piercer. So, this is... We have the alternate art of him right here. I, I mean, I'll also check the price on him. I don't know if he's going to be good. He's a common... So, I don't know, but this is really, really good art. Showcase art, alternate art, whatever you want to call it. It's really freaking sweet. Okay, Survivor's Bond. So, choose one or both. That's pretty cool. So, usually these effects are pretty good. Return target human creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return target non-human creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, basically, it's kind of a uh, bigger card. Uh, uh, does better. Um, it, it's more flexible. It's one of those flexible type of cards. Day Squad Marshal. Horn Bash Mentor. So this is our first, second uncommon, Savai Thundermane. Oh my god, look at how cool that is. Dude, it's a freaking lion that has lightning all over it. That's freaking awesome. Freaking Svelte and Vinilov. You, Mr. Man, whatever place you are from, you know how to draw some pretty awesome lightning lions. Uh, lion dings. I don't know what you would call that, something like that. Whenever you, so he's a uh, a red and a white for a 3-2. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay 2. When you do, Savaya Thunder Main deals 2 damage to a target creature and you gain 2 life. So, not too bad. Flourishing Fox for 1 is a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you cycle another card, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Flourishing Fox. So cycling, I guess, is a, a big thing, I guess, uh, in this sort of thing. I feel like we have an extra. We do indeed have a hollow foil. Pretty sweet. Look at this. Look at this. This is they're, they're advertising a YouTube video. That's kind of freaking weird. Okay, so flourishing fox and Savai Triome. I don't. I don't know if this is good. I don't know. Oh, so it's oh, so it's basically a better version of these type of cards. It's actually a better version of this one specifically. So it's for it's a rare. It's not just a com or common as normal. Uh, usually these are worth uh, a good penny, a pretty penny. A uh, Savai Triumph enters battlefield tap. So for cycling three, d uh, discard this card, draw a card. So that's actually really cool. So you can actually have a bit more range and have three different types of colors. So let's look up our good old Savai Triumph and see what that is. Um, back in the S's, I believe that is down, yes. So Savai, Savai, there's a lot of Savai's, um, Triumph. Boom, this is like a four fifty, so about a four dollar card here. That's pretty freaking sweet. So this pretty much pays for itself. Actually it does pay for the whole pack. So that's really awesome. Oh dang, look at that! We got the alternate art 
and the uh, hollow uh, triome cloud pier or not tri freaking not triome cloud piercer so that's awesome so we got our we got the three forms uh, sitting around here so that's that's really cool man cloud piercer looks so freaking sweet still a uh, jungle hollow and a beast the beast the beast the beast the beast awesome awesome actually i'm not gonna put that with the ones i'm gonna put that with the good old rares the rarey rares so our beast actually where am i been to putting tokens Oh, I haven't gotten tokens. This is like, I think, one of the only tokens I've actually managed to pull because they don't give me many. Uh, yeah, that's my third token out of, you know, like, what, whatever, like, freaking six packs I've opened. That's kind of messed up that half of them haven't been anything. Okay. So, yeah, two Mythics in this one box. That's, I feel like that's pretty good. I, I'm not too much of an expert on pull rates, but that seems pretty freaking sweet. Okay. So, this is our fourth, our fourth to last. So, uh, what would you call that, like, the sixth? Or, uh, yes, sixth. So this is the sixth one we got. So go for blood for two. A target creature you can you control fights a target creature you don't control. So isn't this the same thing as the Titan Clash, just way less expensive? I don't get that. Ooh, Light of Hope. Really good, really good, really good. So yeah, um, I think I may have explained this one, but it's for one white you get to choose one. You either gain four life, destroy target enchantment, or put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That's freaking awesome. That's a really, really good card. Put that one aside as a deck one. Of one mind. Wow, I really, I really have to like the name of these cards. They got them good. Ooh, dead weight. Really good. Really good stuff. Lava Serpent. Kind of looks like one of those worms. One of the elemental worms. Plummet. Humble Necrolist. Pacifism. Yes, this is another really, really good one. So for two, uh, enchant creature, and it cannot attack or block. So that's another one. So a lot of, I don't know why this pack specifically is giving me a lot of stuff I like. Uh, there's a Glimmer Bell. One of these uh, mutate ones with mig migratory great horn. Pretty sweet. Desk Fang Mentor. So this is our uh, second uncommon. So Primal Empathy for one colorless, a green, and a blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on, creature, on a creature you control. So basically, you get to keep putting plus one, plus one counters... Um, or you get to draw a card. So that's pretty sweet. So we got these more tokens that aren't off cut. So it was only the one that came with the box that's off cut. So that's, that's kind of disappointing. Um, we do not have a foil, but we do have, wait, oh no, 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 no. This is the, uh, we would have had a foil if that was true. We actually, that, that is, uh, the, the, this is the last common. So auspicious Starix. So it's one of those other mutates five for six, six. I feel like that's pretty good. And Fronlin Felidar. Oh, that's a that's a mouthful. So for four, he's a three five. Has vigilance, and creatures you control with vigilance have one tap tar tap card target creature. So we'll see how good that is. That is a, a feline, a cat beast. I guess that's kind of what a uh, well you could consider a line. It's kind of like a cat beast. So this is in the Fs. Let's scroll to the Fs. It is nice having this open, so I can just kind of look at it. Fronlin Felidar. Wah, wah. This guy is worth like 20 cents. So, not not the biggest guy. And another Scour and Banner, Barons, which is always, always welcome in my book. Okay, so down to the last three. Here we go. Whoa, here we go. Man, I'm happy with what we got. We got two. We got, I got my first Planeswalker ever, and we got just two Mythics in general, which is pretty freaking sweet. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is actually starting off with land. Ooh, it's a new evolving wild. Whoa, whoa, that's way cooler than the other art. I mean, the other art was pretty sweet, but dude, this is way cooler. I think Iona's Day Row was another dude I complimented on his art, but that's so awesome, dude. Again, it's with it's with that contrast of blue and red that just looks so awesome because they're so vibrant. That's really cool. Faucet, 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 faucet reader. I don't know actually how that is pronounced. Uh, unlikely aid. Got ourselves a Blazing Volley for one. It deals one damage to each creature your opponent controls. So, not too bad. Kind of an aggro. So, for four, exile target creature with power four or greater. Keep safe. Counter target spell that target that, that targets a permanent you control. Draw a card. So, that's actually pretty okay. So, six for six, six. When it enters the battlefield, you gain four life. Main Serval. I like that art there. Ooh, another one of these awesome arts, dude. Holy freak, look how cool that is. It's so freaking sweet. Wow. Wow. So cool. So cool. I really enjoy those arts. Another Survivor's Bond. Jubilant Skybounder. He bonds in the sky. 
Ooh. So for three, he's a two-two with flying, and creatures you control with flying have spells your opponent casts that target this creature costs two more to cast. Wow. So this is a pretty pretty sweet card. This is our second. So Regal Aleosaur. Wow. That's really cool looking. It's kind of like alien. Like when you think of like an alien lion, that's exactly what you think of. It has like all the weird spice and whatever. It is not quite the same texture, I guess you could call it, of a normal lion. So two for two, two, not too bad. Ooh, and Footfall Crater. Whoa, this seems like an... Oh, it is an Enchant Land. So for one, Enchant Land. Enchant Land is tapped target creature against Trample and Haste until end of turn. Yes, this is uh, indefinitely going to be an aggro card. So just confirming this, this is our last uncommon. And I don't believe we have a rare. Or an, uh, we always have a rare, but we don't have a foil. Okay, boom. Bonders Enclave, another land. So tap to add one Cautilus, or three, and tap, draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control creature with power four or greater i don't know how good that'll be i feel like just just judging by what this card is it is not going i'm not going to guess it's over a dollar that is my personal suspicions on what this is all about so what do you got bonders bonders enclave yep 68 cents so kind of poopy but you know what it's a card and a tranquil grove sweet Ooh, companion whoa as each game begins you can place one card with companion here, if you start a deck, if your starting deck meets its con condition, we cast it once from here. So this is like the zone, I guess, the companion zone. I don't exactly know how that works fully, but I, I do think it's cool nonetheless. Pretty freaking sweet. So it's like a companion token, I guess you could say. Okay, down to the last two Accordia packs. Let's let's check this out. Ooh, oh, these packs are kind of hard to rope into. I wish they had like a pull tab that actually worked. Like, I mean, the Japanese ones, I believe, do, but they don't work too well. We got another Forbidden Friendship. Oh. And a Garrison Cat. Anticipate. A Night Squad Commando. Actually, let me, before I keep going, uh, I gotta move all these cards. These dang, look at all these. These are all in commons and commons that we have here. Boom, this is a huge, huge fan stack. And I'm going to go through them, of course, to see how good they are. I'll, I guess I'll just put this away for now. A Cathartic Reunion. The Almighty Brushwag. Uh, Moscow Goriath. Yes, Goriath. Spontaneous Flight. Blood Curdle. Flycatcher Jurafid. Whoa, what the frick? What is this? I know you're like mutating, but you can't crossbreed, dude. That's, oh, gross. <laughs> Not what I'm looking for. Stromwell the Capricor. General Enforcer. Actually, I think... Was that, a, was that a good card? I may just be looking at it on the list. I don't I don't believe it is. I'm just going to double check because... You know what? I, I, don't, I don't frankly give a flip. Yes, okay. So not, not the good card. I just for some reason thought it was. Okay, so this is our second. And this is the last common. So weaponize the monsters for one. It's an enchantment. Uh, for two, sacrifice a creature. Weaponize the monster... Deals two damage to any target. Some more aggro, so we know a foil, but we do have a whirlwind of thought. Wow! So this is a cost four, uh, one colorless, one blue, one red, and one white. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. So that actually, if you have the required stuff, could be good. But like I said, an, an, another way you can use one of these is having one of those, um, those golden sort of uh, tri-colored lands instead of the double color to kind of give you more flexibility and i mean a lot of people at least back in the day used to run these sort of uh, tri-colored was more of a of a bigger thing than it is now i mean i don't know for sure because i haven't been able to go back and see the decks but that's just kind of about it so this is about uh, almost two bucks so pretty okay pretty okay and we have a thwomp okay so I think we got a lot of the magic that we had, uh, pun not intended, uh, in the beginning of this box. But you know what? That's okay. I still got the packs, and I organized them even. So I just, I guess it was the the Vivian, I think it was, yeah, the Vivian uh, Arts or whatever gave me the best look. So got to remember to look out for those. Got ourselves a Capture Sphere. Another awesome serrated scorpion. I thought that said shredded balls. That would not feel too pleasant. Gust of Wind, Corpse Churn, another cool one. A Dranath Healer, Excavation. Well, what? That is not a mole. He is uh, a monstrosity. Really gross. Snare Tactician, 
Necropanther. This guy was I always thought was freaking sweet. Looks really cool. This is actually an older one, I believe. And then what they're leading you to believe. Charger of the Forever Beast. Whoa, Forever Beast. That's a really cool name. So for three, he does a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast a spell, reveal a creature card from your hand. Charger of the Forever Beast deals damage to target creature or planes that are equal to the revealed card's power. Wow, that's actually really awesome. And this is her last uncommon, so Unbreakable Bond. And we do indeed, I believe, have a foil. So that's pretty sweet, I believe. Yep, yep, yep. Boom. A Death's Oasis. Now that is one heck of a name for an enchantment. So for a white, a red, or not a red, a black, and a green, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into the graveyard. Then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. For one sacrifice this, you gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost among creatures you control. So not too bad, not, not too bad. And a lot of times it's like people have learned to use even these kind of like weirdly vague and specific cards to their advantage. So that's why I always check, even though I'm like, ah, this may not be as good as I might want it to be. Death's Oasis, 27 cents. <laughs> I was right, I was more right on this than I thought I was. Okay, boom, <gasps> boom, look at that. Everquill Phoenix, we actually got uh, a hollow foil rare. Wow, wow, wow as the good one would say. So for two colorless and two red, he's a 4-4 four, four flying. Whenever this creature mutates, create a red artifact token named Feather with one. Sacrifice this Feather, or sacrifice Feather. Return target Phoenix card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So it's kind of like a Phoenix Feather, which they're all about being rebirthed. So that's pretty cool. That's actually, I guess that's another one I can look up. Uh, so ease, I believe that is more downwards. So this is Everquill Phoenix. Um, it's normally 25 cents, so not, not the best card, but it is a foil, so it probably goes for closer to, you know, 60 cents to a dollar. A forest and a human soldier to top it off. Pretty freaking sweet. Okay, is everyone ready? Is everyone ready for it? We have, boom, four, uh, core 2021. May not be the most variety, but I did what I could with what was available. Um, like I said, when I went to go look for stuff, and another reason why I may have given it away a little bit at the beginning there, is I had also the Core 2021 open, and basically if we get it to Fairy, we win the game. <laughs> um, okay, so here we are. We got ourselves four here. Uh, three of them are Shana, I'm going to leave the Liliana for last. So this is, yeah, this was all... There was basically some Core 2021, some Theros, and Ikoria left. And I already opened Theros and Ikoria for the bonus. So I was like, you know what? I might as well do some good old Core 2021. And these ones are freaking weird because you have to open them from the back. So, got ourselves a Frantic Inventory. A Burn Bright. Whoa, she's fierce. Look out for her. A rambunctious Mutt. He is very rambunctious and a good boy. We got ourselves a Capture Sphere. He's crunching to a ball. A Meyer Lurker, the Beast of Cthulhu. Pride McKeon prancing around as he does. Walking Corpse, one of my favorite cards of all time for magic. Return to Nature, another good one for displaying enchantments. Teferi's Protégé, some draw. A, I um, said Homer's Edge, hmm, Edge. Uh, Watcher of the Sphere. Whoa. Why did bird people? He's a bird person. We had a goose, and now he's an owl. So for one white and one blue, he's a two-tooth flying, so pretty okay for its cost. You just with spells with flying you cast cost one less to cast. Not too bad. Whenever another creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, Watcher of Sphere gets plus one plus one in turn. That seems like a pretty okay one. Uh, Tolarian Kraken. And this right here is our last uncommon. Okay. So there are, so we did not get a hollow foil, but what we did get is, boom! That was kind of a weird flip. Uh, heroic Intervention for two. Permanence you control, I believe that's a Johnny. Um, Permanence you control gain, hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Wow, wow. Yeah, a Johnny Goldman, that is a Johnny. Oh, wow, that's actually really, really good. Um, at least, hopefully. Um, and we got a Griffin and a Swamp for the token and everything. Okay, so Heroic, Heroic Intervention. Oh, wait, did I change it? This is Core 2021. Up to the H's. Let's see, let's see. H, 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 H. A little too far. It is Heroic Intervention. Okay. Ooh, this is like a $6 card. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, 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 nice. 
Boom. Niceness. I probably should have separated the cards that were good and that weren't good in the rares, but, you know, screw it. I, I did what I did, and I'm not going to throw a fid. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, I have so much trash lying around because of this, but you know what's worth it? Because we get awesome cards like Bright Burn or Burn Bright. Either one is fine with me. Another boy. A Spined Megalodon. Uh, Goblin Wizardry. He's very wizardous. Sanguine Indulgence, a card that I get too much of. A Colossal Dreadmaw. Pretty sweet, pretty big, pretty luxurious. Mistral Singer. It's a card, definitely. Uh, Chandra's Magma, a Return to Nature, Grasp of Darkness, really good, uh, Tide Skimmer, got ourselves an Obsessive Stitcher, that was almost rhyme, and the last in common is Falcon Adept, so we indeed do not have a foil, but we do, indeed, Necromentia. This one is not very good from the last one I did check up at its price. It's not worth that much, but you know what? It's rare, nonetheless. And an island and a treasure. I've actually never gotten one of those. Sacrifices, artifact, and one man of any color. Nice. So it's kind of like a Eldrazi Skyon. Or Scion. It's just, they make names so hard to pronounce, man. I would mispronounce them like half the time. It's not my fault. They just use almost a different language to make these it's almost like they make them up and it's only the people that made them so it's spectacular that actually understand it read the tides gobble fiend that I, like i said i already said this art was awesome just freaking cool monsters man that's what i'm here for alpine watch dog he's a dog big dog a library larcenist another one of those cards that are there ornery dilophosaur Roaming Ghost Light, a Return to Nature, a Skeleton Archer, Anointed Chor Chor Chorister, Mr. Man. Ooh, Liliana's Devotee, that is a showcase art, I believe. He's shown a little, little too much nip for my taste, but that's okay. A Tavern Swindler, so 2-2 two, two for 2, tap, pay 3 life, flip a coin. Oh, wow. Never seen a flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain six life. So, but you don't. Nothing happens if you lose. So that's pretty okay. And last one, traitorous greed. Whoa, that's that's the big man. The big man that we got. So for four, gain control of a target creature until end of turn. Tap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Add two mana of any one color. Wow, that's pretty good. That seems pretty good. And no foil. No foil. None. Oh, Massacre Worm! We got a Mythic! Oh, this guy's pretty good, I believe. Man, Massacre Worm. He's one of the staples, man. Wow, okay. I believe he is worth a considerable amount. Um, this Massacre Worm, because he's pretty, pretty okay. Pretty, pretty okay. He's not, he's not too, like, amazing. He's, it's not like he's an awesome Mythic or nothing, but he's, he's pretty sweet for the standards of a card. If you're talking about, you know, like, a common here, he's... He's pretty freaking cool or stuff or whatever. Okay. Right here, Masker Worm. About a $4 card. So, boom. There it is. Got ourselves a Mythic. So, for 6, he's a 6-5. Six, when this enters the battlefield, creatures you control get minus 2, minus 2. Or your opponent controls get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. When a creature an opponent loses, or an opponent controls dies, they lose 2 life. So, freaking sweet. Freaking sweet. So, 3. So, last time, we got 1 Mythic. It was a $12 Mythic, but we got 1. This time, we got 3. Three and maybe even a fourth. Okay, so we got a mountain and a soldier as our final cut. Mmm. Some sour, sour lemonade. Yeah, Liliana. Do us do us proud. Show us your boyfriend, uh, Teferi, in this pack, please. That is what I'm looking for. Alright, alright, alright. Ourselves. Define strike for one. Target creatures plus one plus zero to an attorney. You get to draw a card. Not too bad. Read the tides. Good for Popper, at least. Uh, Hobble uh, Fiend. Gobble Fiend. Or a Dilophosaur. Dilophosaur. Oh, yep. That's how he is. That's how he feels. Another Shandrism Magmut. A Return to Nature. I think I've overplaced out of those. Just in here. Another Grasp of Darkness. Pretty good. A Another Petiferous Protégé. Uh, Season Hall, but this guy's not too bad. So two, he's a three, one, discard a card, tap this, uh, it gains indestructible into the turn. So pretty okay. A Warden of the Woods, big six, five, seven vigilance, whenever it becomes target, 
the target of a spell or ability your opponent controls, you may draw two cards. And our last big old uh, uncommon is one for one one with lifelink. When Archfiend's Vessel enters the battlefield, if it enters from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, exile it. If you do, create a 5-5 five, five black demon creature. That's pretty sweet. We do. Oh, we do for the final pack. Yes, the, the gods of the people. They've blessed us with the good old Hall of Foil. Boom. What? What? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Are you actually kidding me? Two packs in a row. I get the Massacre Worm. What is that? What is that, dude? That's crazy. Dude. That's okay. Okay. That's, that's insane. That's, that's really insane. Oh, my God. That's... I, I did not expect to get, what is this, four mythics? Four mythics in, what is this, 14 packs. That's, that's crazy. Four of those packs had a mythic in them. And two of them were Massacre Worm. Man, that's crazy. I'm going to have to make them a deck just because I got, so I was going to say so many. I mean, I got two of them, but geez. Massacre Worms, eight bucks right here. That's crazy. Pays for two packs. And see what our foil is. Now, this is the big reveal. Bam! Ooh! He's a foil! So, Spore Web Waver. Let's see. Let's see. The Spore Web is going to be in the Ethith, which I believe is up a bit. Spore, 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 um, spark, close spine, spore of Weaver. 20 cents! So pretty much the best card we could have ever gotten. Boom. And to end it off, we got a Dismal Backwater and a Sapro Lane. Dang, man. That's all I got to say is dang. So I will, um, next episode, have a, either a win or a loss. And, and not to say that this isn't a win, because obviously it is, just because all these cards are pretty cool. Uh, but just basically how good these cards are and whether I made my money off of them or not. So I believe out of those, those are the better ones. I believe Savai Triumph. I believe that was a good one. My memory fails me in these desperate times. And then all of these, of course, are pretty okay. And yeah. So these are our biggins of the... Well, not, not all these. These. So these are the bigger cards of it. So we got ourselves two Massacre Worms. A good old Planeswalker, General Kudro, Savai Triumph, Heroic Intervention, and the Ozolith. That is, that's awesome. That's really good. We got freaking four Mythics, man. I got one last time, and I was like, dang, this is like one of my, you know, first Mythics. I do have like one or two Mythics, but th that was like one of my first Mythics, and it was worth quite an amount. And we pulled freaking four of them. Four of them. Two of them being the same card. I was like, oh, this is going to have another Mythic. I felt it right before I pulled it, and it was true. My dreams came true, but that's that's so awesome. So we definitely made a good amount of money off this, and I will get back to you guys in the next episode. But I do hope you have enjoyed, and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and go visit my YouTube channel, channel, my channel, at youtubecom slash bros. If you were already there, then go ahead and do that subscribe thing. Comment down below what you think I should open next, and leave a like if you do enjoy this stuff because I will do more of it. And I'll see all of you guys in the next episode.